Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Watchworld and today I have an unboxing for you. Yeah, today we are going to be unboxing, hopefully, uh, the Britix chronograph, vintage chronograph, uh, from around 1965. So, let's crack on and get straight into it. So, in this box here, we should have a Britix chronograph uh, from around 1965. Uh, I bought this on Chrono24. I've waited quite a while for it to arrive, so I'm very happy it's here, and I'm very excited to show it to you. So, I'm going to use my trusty uh, Camillus titanium knife to get this open, so let's have a look and see what's inside. So, let's have a look and see what's inside. Uh, I got this watch on Chrono24. Um, it's without the original box and papers. It's quite an old watch, so very rare that you would find a watch from the 60s with its original box and papers. So, we have a little wrap here. Let's see what we have underneath. Quite a lot. They've protected it very well, that's for sure. Always a good sign. Now, let's get rid of some of this paper right here. And here we have it, guys. Now, very excited to show you this, so let's see what is inside. More wrapping, and here we go. The Britix Chronograph. I must say, from a first impression, this looks absolutely stunning. Look at that very vintage chronograph feel indeed. Okay, so not actually running at the moment, just looking at the small seconds subdial. Let's take it off this uh, band here and have a look. Now, let's put that to one side. Now, here we go, look at that. That is absolutely stunning. So yeah, according to the advert on Chrono24, this watch was made around uh, 1965. Uh, so let's just try and wind it up. See if we get that second hand moving. Yeah, there it goes, we focus there. So the second hand is the subdial at the nine o'clock. So that's going now, and the one at the three, by default, is the chronograph minutes. So, uh, let's see how good the pushes are. This is an old watch, so the top should activate the uh, chronograph. There we go. So I've done a bit of digging around online. Well, I tried to do a bit of digging around online. Didn't actually find out much about the company. Uh, I was looking at... I found this watch, as I said, through Chrono24. I was looking at vintage... Um, I, put, I was looking at vintage chronographs, but I selected the filter to the 50s and 60s, and this was one of the first ones that came up, and I absolutely loved that dial. Chronograph pushers feel very strong, very distinct. Some chronographs I've seen in the past um, have had... Uh, very issue you have to really push the pushes like with a lot of strength to get the chronograph going and not a huge fan of that but this a very nice uh, feel to it let's okay so unlike most modern chronographs it's not the top button to pause the chronograph hand so that starts it and then you use the uh, push it at the four o'clock to stop it and to reset it. So with most chronographs I've seen in the past, it's the two o'clock pusher that pushes and stops it, and then the bottom one resets. Quite interesting. Um, 
solid case back, nothing on there, just stainless steel case back with the numbers 321. Um, like the Laco Akin that I uh, reviewed last week, Echt Leder again is on the strap, which is German for genuine leather. Let's switch over to the macro lens now, shall we, and get a closer look at this vintage chronograph. So, we've got the macro lens on, let's take a closer look at this piece. I absolutely love chronographs. I don't know what it is about the uh, two subdial chronographs. They just look so nice. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love uh, most chronographs that have the three subdials, but I don't know, there's something about two subdials on a watch that just looks... I don't know if it's the symmetry, but it just looks absolutely stunning, especially when they're at the nine o'clock and the three o'clock. Um, very strong ticking sound. I'm going to hold this up to my microphone. I don't know if you can hear it. I don't know if you can hear that, but the ticking is quite loud uh, on this watch. Yeah, nice sweep on the second hand on the nine o'clock sub dial. I love the numerals, very small and clear. Uh, very clean dial actually for a chronograph. I know it's a vintage chronograph, but a lot of the time with modern day chronographs, it, look, it looks very squashed in and busy. This looks much more elegant and simple. Let's get the, chrono, the chronograph hand going again. Um, so yeah, I don't actually know a lot about this watch. The advert didn't say much. Uh, again, I tried to find some information about Britix online, didn't have um, much luck finding out much about it online. But one thing we can do is take some measurements. So let's see uh, where this watch stands in terms of how it's going to look on the wrist. So we'll start with a case diameter, 37.6 millimeters on the case diameter. So the listing said it was 38 millimeters. So that is about right. It looks quite a thin watch. So yeah, about 13 millimeters there on the thickness. Log to log, we're looking at around 46.3 millimeters. And then a strap width or an inner lug width of, let's have a look, so 19.8, so 20 millimeter strap on this watch. Uh, lovely strap, actually. I love this strap that it's come with. Obviously not the original strap. Um, the dealer who, I presume, the dealer who had this watch, who I bought it from, put the strap on. But I think the brown leather strap goes quite well with the, a uh, gold stainless steel uh, case and the kind of cream dial that we have here. Love the contrasting of the cream with the red chronograph hand. Let's try and get a bit more of a close up. There we go. Uh, so anti magnetic as well, it says on the dial. Absolutely stunning, this piece is. I'm going to stop this again and set it back. There we go. Um, let's take a look and see what this watch looks like on the wrist. So we've seen the measurements, 46.3 millimeter lug to lug width, so it should look quite nice and elegant on the wrist. 38 millimeters as well, sweet spot for my wrists, anywhere between 37 and 40 millimeter suits my own wrist personally very nicely. So let's have a look and see what it looks like. Okay, and here we go. The Britix Vintage Chronograph 321 on the wrist. And I must say, I think this could be a new personal favorite. I am absolutely loving this watch so far. Love the subdials, love the color scheme, the cream with the red seconds hand, the gold plating, and the uh, brown, uh, uh, the brown leather strap, sorry. Sorry, it's late at night, I've had a long day. <laughs> So if we get closer up on the dial again, if we can get that to focus. So it says Swiss underneath the Britix chronograph uh, writing at the top. Uh, 17 rubies in the movement of this watch. I'm guessing it's around, I'm going to take a guess that it's around 21,000 um, beats per hour, judging by the second hand subdial at 9 o'clock. Loving the design around the outskirts of the 
dial around the numbers. Looks very vintage, very elegant. Again, strong feel on the pushers. Doesn't take too much pressure to get it going, which suits me down to the ground. So let's see what the crown feels like. I've had a lot of experience with vintage watches in the past and the crown is one thing that you have to be really careful with because some of them can be very fragile. Let's see what this one is like here. So it's just the one setting because there's no date on this watch. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and set it to the time at the moment, which is actually, I'm gonna go backwards. It's quarter to 11. Uh, here in Ireland quarter to 11 but yeah very tactile feels very strong which is always a good sign doesn't feel um, limp or flimsy or anything like that the winding as well I don't know if you can hear that feels very very solid this watch for a 1960s watch now i'm gonna spend a few weeks with it wearing this this is probably gonna be my main watch for the foreseeable future uh, trying it out but at the moment from a first look it feels very solid and very together and very strong for a 1960s watch so yeah overall i have been very happy with this purchase very high rise on the crystal as well uh, to be honest, I think that's the highest the crystal rises from the case in any of my uh, watches that I own. Um, but very different, very unique. And you wouldn't really notice it unless you're looking at it from the side. You wouldn't really tell from a front-facing view that the crystal rises that high. So yeah, overall, this seems to be a good purchase. Lovely sweep on the seconds hand, both the subdial and the uh, chronograph seconds hand. Very clean dial, lovely two sub dials on this watch. Uh, love the color scheme. They all, everything goes together very nicely. The brown leather strap, the gold stainless steel case, the cream colored dial with the red uh, chronograph hand. Yeah, overall, I am very happy with this watch. Uh, in next week's video, I'm gonna spend a week with this watch now on the wrist. In next week's video, I will let you know how it goes. Uh, how the week has been wearing this watch and yeah that's about it guys so this is the Britix chronograph from the mid 1960s I hope you've enjoyed this unboxing please do hit that subscribe button guys if you enjoyed this video it would really mean a lot to me and I hope you have a great week and I will see you again next Thursday okay guys take it easy for now